so can you see the screen right yes you can see the screen right okay you can see the presentation open right yes sir yeah so guys good afternoon uh, some of you please respond so that i can know whether the people are in or out okay good afternoon guys good afternoon <laughs> yeah yeah well so today uh, our main topic of discussion which is a continuation of yesterday is especially the types of machine learning methods and then we'll have a look on supervised learning supervised machine learning and unsupervised machine learning and then we'll have a look on most popular machine learning techniques used okay so before uh, jumping into the session right away let us have a quick recap on what's deep learning what's machine learning what's artificial intelligence so firstly what's deep learning what kind of iterations the input data should undergo to get the required output this learning is called deep learning it uh, it generally came into existence by trying to make, mimic the human brain you know how how the data is read within the human brain it is with the help of neurons let us understand the concept of deep learning by using the neural networks of humans so this is how a neuro, real neural network looks initially the neural network the dendrites take the data from another cell and then this goes through series of axons where the data is processed and through the terminals it goes out as an output okay for uh, the energy which the neuron requires uh, to uh, like move the data to mobilize the data is called action potential okay uh, you don't need more biology other than this to understand deep networks uh, sorry deep uh, learning so let us go back to deep learning deep learning usually has three layers input layer hidden layers and out output layers what happens in the input layer is input layer receives the data okay and this data is converted into weights and then these weights are uh, will be proceeded to the hidden layers here i have just drawn one hidden layer right but there will be many hidden layers in a deep learning network so this data which are taking from the input layer it passes through numerous number of hidden layers where the data is processed and finally output is achieved so what happens just like uh, we have action potential in actual neural networks and uh, like whatever the energy we require for the data to transfer within cells that is called as action potential right like that in deep learning also we have certain parameters certain threshold where the hidden layers require to uh, proceed the data to the forward layers let us uh, see this hidden layer for example this uh, every hidden layer will read different different parameters of the input data let us say a hidden layer is trying to read the contrast of the given picture as an input okay In every hidden layer to get itself activated there will be some threshold value so for example it needs a threshold value of 0.6 for it to approve it as a man after seeing the pic okay then if the threshold value of the given picture uh, contrast contrast value is 0.6 then it will pass on the data to the forward hidden layers that's how finally an output is achieved to understand it simply the data goes through hid more number of hidden layers to achieve output that's how the deep learning happens what what in contrast generally like from childhood you listen the definition of cpu right you draw a picture of input cpu and then output so what is this different from that cpu deep learning usually requires something other than cpu it requires a gpu which is called as graphical processing unit why it requires gpu or than cpu cpu also does the same same thing right it takes the input processes it and gives output why do you require gpu instead of cpu because deep learning it deals with huge volumes of data when compared with an ordinary computer that's the reason why we use gpus in deep learning and they are very costly as well and uh, let us uh, quickly jump into machine learning concept okay now we have learned what deep learning is now what's machine learning is other than the definition which i have I made it here i would like to explain deep machine learning in other words as kalyan said 
machine learning is generally like whenever you see this term you get confused in future after this presentation i tell you but uh, mind me saying this always uh, try to by heart this if you like see the word machine learning the word itself says le machine needs to learn remember like that so let us say what's machine learning in my terms machine learning is to make a machine learn what to learn to perform specific tasks by using its experience okay this is what machine learning is you need to teach a machine to perform specific tasks and now what this definition says like apart from all the english that i like kept on the slide just remember only these points enhanced tasks and performance measure will give the machine more experience through which it can perform better for example let us say like uh, the machine is taught to play chess at the first time it might not play well and after that uh, by playing on the machine gets improved experience through which it can play better than the previous time so this is what machine learning is generally okay these concepts are actually like uh, invented or discovered what can i tell you uh, they were already there from 1950s like okay why did they suddenly come into existence is anybody there why did machine learning or artificial intelligence what are the terms that you are talking about why did they actually come into existence yeah kalyan are you there yes yes sir uh, yeah we know that uh, cren is an organization in which uh, uh, it is the it, it started the first website with the hypertext so yeah. uh, usually it is started by a scientist so the scientist can exchange the information data to find what are the new things that are being developed so the ultimate reason is uh, the use of ai will result in creation of of uh, dark matter which will be available to us at cheaper rate and at high volumes so which yeah. is an uh, fuel for many things like uh to run uh, as pravin sir has said that uh, whole india can uh, can function with the uh, a day of electricity with 1 ounce of uh, sorry 1 uh, ounce of dark matter per day yeah so i think it is the ultimate reason why artificial intelligence is being stressed that much yeah fine so according to what you said uh the cern is trying to uh, extract the dark matter through which the world might run right but uh, i have a point here the dark matter like the cern thing is so private it is so private as you know like until now to be honest as a person as a nomad who is living with no connection with the world i have no uh, idea on what cern is and i i believe strongly that many businessmen over the small scale to medium scale businessmen they don't have idea on what cern is but what i believe why this artificial intelligence and uh, these things came into existence is what you said is absolutely correct but that stands true for the people who know but for the people who doesn't know i believe that there was no data back then right when the internet was just started there used to be many businesses but uh, there was no data to implement all these right but now if you see due to the advent of internet or whatever <laughs> there is numerous of data like i can uh, uh, like terminize it term it as a big bigger data <laughs> the it is more larger than big data so by using that data you can derive more valuable insights so why not use artificial intelligence which was in the wardrobe till now so i feel that this is the reason why it is becoming famous now instead of uh, though it was invented back then yeah so obviously i already told about machine learning which is nothing but the experience uh, which a machine learns through a series of tasks and performance measures okay and now what is artificial intelligence generally what happens in machine learnings 
a, a machine gets an experience of how to perform a task right this happens in machine learning whereas in artificial intelligence i i'd rather say artificial intelligence as an experience rather than just a definition i say the machine which is experiencing has to act upon the experience right for example i have an experience of uh, not to drink water if it is above certain degrees centigrade this is my experience whenever you give me a water above my limit i won't drink i am acting upon my experience right this ex- uh, acting upon experience this effect is called artificial intelligence and yeah is there anybody else other than kalyan in the call please respond if you are at least a yes yes varun yeah salman i'm happy to hear that so w- what are the types of machine learning there are generally three types of machine learning supervised unsupervised and reinforcement machine learning in fact there are other types of machine learning as well but the for the time being these three are more than enough for us to learn and then we'll uh, will definitely focus on the other types of machine learning firstly what supervised machine learning is generally uh, in a supervised machine learning it describes a class of problem that involves a model a model is used where to the model initially both the input as well as output are given and then by using this series of inputs and outputs it will have to predict the outputs in future let us say uh, to explain you more clearly there will be a model to which a data which contains input and outputs are given okay and then in future again some other inputs other than the, this initial data are given so that it will predict outputs the main objective or the outcome of supervised learning is to predict outputs depending upon the previous input and outputs so yeah so that's how supervised machine learning works and the reason why it's called supervised machine learning is simple again by go by the terminology supervised it means supervisor there will be a teacher to that model there will be a supervisor to that model it is not completely explicit or automated so that's the reason it is called supervised learning and uh, coming to the supervised learning there are two types of multi, uh, machine learning problems which predominantly occur i can tell you uh, there are two types of solving those problems instead of mentioning them as problems in the supervised machine learning the two types are one classification and two regression what, what what's classification generally it involves uh, what uh, like i had already told you machine learning it involves supervised machine learning it involves prediction right but there are different types of predictions you can predict numbers you can predict categorical variables i am using the terminologies directly because all of us have a background of business analytics so what's classification it involves prediction of outputs class labels it means categorical variables for the inputs given for example if uh, if you are giving if you are seeing a review of an online shopping platform you can uh, after seeing that you can easily say that it's a positive review or a negative review right and uh, let us say uh, generally there is a rating scale for reviews from 1 to 5 if you see a product rated 2 you will obviously say it, it has got poor ratings if you see a product rated 3 you can say that it has got average ratings right so by looking at this numerical data if you are able to comprehend what type of uh, rating it is what type of uh, categorical category it falls in this is called as uh, classification if a machine does it if a machine classifies the data according to the inputs given that is called classification and what's regression i hope uh, you are pretty clear with this concept from the learnings you have had in r what's a regression a regression is generally the prediction of numerical output from the numerical inputs given let us say predicting sales in a in a company there will be uh, like different time periods and the sales coming in through the uh, through the date of sales you can obviously predict what will be the future sales 
uh, the future demand for cash. This is generally a regression. It can be done in multiple ways. Linear regression, polynomial regression, multilinear regression. There are numerous ways how you do regression. But the main objective of regression here is to predict numerical outputs from the numerical inputs given. And then we'll jump into unsupervised learning. Oh, uh, Varun, sorry yeah. for the interruption. Yeah, I yeah. have small doubt. Yeah, yeah. Who is this? Uh, in regression model, yeah, I'm calmly. Yeah, yeah, calmly. In regression model, do we have inputs only numeric? Uh, is it don't involve any categorical variables? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking that question. Firstly, like uh, to tell your question very deeply, we all know that computer understands only numbers, right? Zero and one, right? Whatever the data that we are seeing, that we are trying to inter uh, like uh, communicate with the computer, that is being quantified. Yes or no, Comli? Comli, are you there? Yes, I'll agree that. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Here. yeah. In regression, it is not that only numerical outputs. I'm sorry, I have used that word, and I'm thanking you for you asking me this question. It is not like only numerical input. It can be uh, categorical input as well, but it will be quantified eventually. Are you getting me? The categorical inputs are quantified. Uh, and then if it is a categorical input, then it will be uh, done, uh, then it will be like uh, gone through, it will go through some logistic regression, as you know, if it is categorical. So I repeat, regression uh, just doesn't include only numerical inputs or outputs. It includes categorical inputs or outputs as well. But the funda here is in supervised machine learning, you you get you give the model both input and outputs for training. Okay, but while testing it with another input data, you give only out inputs to see how better it is giving outputs. Commonly, did I clear your Question? Yes, I got it. Thank you, Arun. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So now, what's unsupervised machine learning about? Unsupervised machine learning. Firstly, we'll go again by the terminology. Terminology, what does the terminology say? It's unsupervised. So there is no teacher. It is more explicit. And yeah, that's what we can draw through the terminology. Now let us go to the actual definition. Unsupervised uh, machine learning describes a class of problem that involves a model to describe or extract relationship in data. Right. Initially, while we are doing supervised machine learning, we are giving both input as well as output. Whereas in unsupervised machine learning, to your model that you have made, you won't give any kind of uh, you won't give any kind of outputs. You will only give input. The data itself will see the data, uh, like process, the, process it, and then it will automatically segregate the given data into different categories. So that's how the unsupervised machine learning works. Uh, it will have no teacher or the supervisor to change it accordingly. And you will give only input data and the data processes itself. And then we'll go through the like predominant problems which are occurring in unsupervised machine learning. The most important uh, problem solvings in unsupervised machine learning are one is clustering and another is des uh, density estimation. What's clustering? Generally, uh, there will be, uh, let us imagine a bag which contains veggies, fruits, okay, which contains all the home groceries. Uh, you give it to an an unsupervised machine learning model, it will segregate that into fruits separately, veggies separately, and whatever is available, it segregates that into separate categories. That's how clustering works. Like for example, the most important clustering you do in your real life is clustering of places, clustering of cities, or sometimes, it depends on the data obviously, but in sales, to be more specific, you do clustering of uh, places. 
okay and uh, the most predominant clustering methodology that we use in our machine learning is k means clustering in future classes uh, kalyan will obviously explain you in detail with programming okay and the second machine learning problem that occurs in unsupervised learning is destiny estimation as we know like checking the normality of data uh, these things are very important right while creating a model or testing it so destiny estimation is one important aspect of unsupervised machine learning and thirdly visualizations and projections projections are nothing but predictions yeah yeah Some, yeah yeah you're not audible your voice is breaking and i don't know who is talking yeah yeah you can ask doubts okay i'm proceeding so unsupervised machine learning got visualizations as well as projections in it you know what are visualizations right creating infographics using the data which are more uh, like storytelling instead of just data and projections are predictions that you are getting from the given inputs so these are the four aspects but the most important two factors are clustering and density estimation in unsupervised machine learning so simple well, if you ask me uh, what is uh, supervised machine learning i'll tell you simply this supervised machine learning consists of both input and output data initially and after that we predict outputs by using other inputs which we provide through testing if anyone got doubt in this point like uh, supervised learning i can explain you more clearly if you ask me that did anybody uh, like uh, got prob like has anybody got a problem in supervised learning well then yeah okay and Un whereas unsupervised learning you just give the input data okay and after that through that input data you predict the outputs or you segregate the the data given that's how unsupervised learning works it is the main goals of uh, supervised learning is uh, prediction of data by by the inputs given whereas in unsupervised learning the main goal is to cluster the data now what is reinforcement learning this is very important guys because i feel that most of the humans learn this way right so generally i'm just taking an example in my childhood uh, my my father used to stop me to jump into like some uh, pits or something whatever are there on lands land holes he used to stop me but once i tried jumping in it when my father is not in the home and then i got the taste of it and that's when i realized not to jump again so my point here uh, in giving this example is we learn by mistakes don't we so that's how reinforcement learning works you take uh, you take your mistakes as an experience and uh, if you are doing the correct things you reward the model and just because you are rewarding your model when it is doing the right things it will try to do more right things other than the mistakes okay this is the background uh, algorithm that was used the other day kalyan was uh, talking about some artificial intelligence robot which has bet the world's number one gamer i i guess uh, reinforcement learning is the blueprint of that robot because like it has learned from its experience of how not to play so that it will not get rewarded it will learn more of how to play so that i get get more rewarded okay what's a reward in terms of modeling what generally is a reward you will set goals in a model okay you will uh, try to make a model so that the model uh, will uh, frequently try to reach the goal set in this process it will uh, improve its accuracy of reaching the goal that's how reinforcement learning works i will uh, give you a video through which you can understand more uh, clearly about reinforcement learning guys can you see the video playing can anybody respond please
Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So you can see a rooster over there, right? The rooster is uh, uh, trying to uh, hit on the pink color so that the owner of the rooster is giving it a food. It's food. You can see that, right? Wherever the rooster, uh, wherever the pink color is, the rooster is trying to hit only on that because it is getting rewarded once after it is hitting the pink color. Every time it is hitting the pink color, it is getting rewarded. You can see that, right? No matter how the side person is juggling the colors, the rooster is only trying to hit the pink color. I don't say that machines are as capable as this rooster as of, as of now. But trust me, if it has bet the world's number one gamer, I don't think we are so far away from this kind of intelligence. Yeah, so this is all about reinforcement learning. And simply, w w why we have kept a slide called supervised versus unsupervised? Because they got their own advantages and disadvantages, right? Firstly, as we know the meanings, supervised learning is to predict some outputs by the inputs given. But to train this data in supervised learning, we give both inputs and outputs. By seeing which, like to explain to you in more uh, clear way, I say this like this. Mundu, it will take initial and A input ki A output asunda choose kundadi. Inputs allow unte, outputs allow usne. How the outputs are by, by few kinds of inputs. And then after getting trained, it will be given some random inputs so that it will give some random outputs. Then they will check for uh, error, how, how good the model is. That's how the supervised machine learning works. Whereas in unsupervised machine learning, there will be no master, just the data is given and this aggregation happens. But why is unsupervised machine learning used? Because not all the data that you are getting it is categorized, right? Most of the times you get the unstructured format of data. So that's the reason where that's the uh, like time where the unsupervised learning comes into the picture. So that's all about supervised learning versus unsupervised machine learning. And like all the, the other differences are just definitions. But, but the main definition is the point of usage. The point of usage is when the data is not available in a categorical format, we use unsupervised machine learning because it makes our work easy. It, it will classify it automatically. And now coming to the most popular techniques in ML. For the first technique is regression. As we like already talked about regression, I don't think I'll mention it again. It is generally uh, creating models to predict values. Let us say, like, I, I guess you're all good with mathematics. Uh, I, I suppose you all know the line equation, right? If two points are given, we all know how to derive a line equation from that. There is a formula for that, right? That is generally the linear regression that you have done in your childhood. Similarly, by using the different set of parameters, we try to derive a model that is regression okay the main reason why regression is used in machine learning yesterday as kalyan said we use both data as well as outputs to get the program right to get that program you use regression and nextly classification classification is classification of class labels like what category the output falls into right but here in the classification, this classification means it in supervised machine learning. Here uh, you don't you give both input and output data, whereas in clustering, you give only input data, it will classify automatically, it will classify on itself. And dimensionality reduction. Let us say uh, Varun is good boy. <laughs> Sorry, let us leave Varun. Uh, Okay, Ram is good boy. Ram is obedient. Ram is punctual. Okay, these are the three uh, attributes of Ram. But instead of using these three attributes, I can use single word called Ram is organized. Instead of using those three, because organized means being neat, being punctual. 
being good generally these three elements are more uh, correlated but these instead of using these three in your model and making it big and confusing you can simply use one term instead of these three things that is called dimensionality reduction you will uh, learn more about dimensionality reduction in factor analysis which i suppose you have already learnt in r what is ensemble methods ensemble methods is combining different uh, types of machine learning algorithms to get a new algorithm what is algorithm generally it's a logic as simple as that combining different types of pre existing algorithms to get a new algorithm to achieve your own objective that is called ensemble methods it is assembling your methods and what are neural networks and deep learning we have already seen what are neural networks and deep learning and what's transfer learning generally let us say you have made a program to identify oh sorry to classify t-shirts round neck t-shirts v neck t-shirts okay you have made a program now you need to make a pro another program to classify jean pants shorts and trousers you need to classify these will you make another you will you write another program from scratch no you will just adopt the program that you have wrote uh, for your uppers i mean the t-shirts or whatever you will just adapt that program and change variables into genes change the where just change you will just change the variables not the whole program right this type of adopting program part of program from another program is called transfer learning and now what is reinforcement learning as i already told you you learn by your mistakes that's how a machine also learns in this the machine gets rewarded uh, like as often as it reaches its goals now what's natural language processing it's not neural guys it's natural what is it generally natural language processing as i answered calmly there will be many times where humans write as if they are drunk but computer has to process it it has got no options so there are packages in python to help computer understand whatever the human is writing to help computer interpret whatever the human is writing as an input so this is all about natural language processing okay computer understand it but uh, uh, let me to uh, let me not take any bad word by haste hmm. there are uh, words in english right which has different meaning according to different contexts let us take the word bun b u n bun that word is an edible thing in one context sometimes that can be used as a bad word sometimes that can be used as a, like describing a person person's face also so there are different contexts how human mind receives a word right that's how word embedding works see how intelligent the machines are becoming they are also able to read the context behind the word that you are like mentioning as an input so you will see all of that in word embeddings so now i have finished with my part the next part will be taken by kalyan but before that can i listen to any one of yes other than komli salman or kalyan any one of theirs i'll be satisfied guys please yes sir yeah thank you again salman i don't know how many of you are uh, marvel fans i suppose uh, the great number of people who watch hollywood frequently are marvel fans i i believe that okay now there is a to do to do thing for you if you want you can do just for your own learning sake i bet you will thank me after learning this definitely if you are not aware of this uh there is a startup called neuralink of elon musk and these are the concept concept we have learned about artificial intelligence right combining both neuralink and machine learning there is a villain whom spider man has already faced i i bet the concept that this villain used back in those days 
can be a reality now using the startup idea of Elon Musk and machine learning. Who is that villain? These are the four options. If you have answer now, it's okay. I'm happy to hear the answer. Even if you want, uh, if you don't know the answer, try to search it and you'll learn good number of things if you search for it. Definitely more about Neuralink and artificial intelligence. And if you want the answer from me, definitely ping me. I'll try to answer it for you. So this is all about the types of machine learning and how they are used. In detail, you'll see about this in future. And now Kalyan will take over this session to explain pre-processing of data. Thank you. Any questions can be pinged to me directly or even Kalyan can clear them as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a nice presentation. So moving on, my friends, uh, I would like to uh, firstly appreciate my friend Varun for his hard, uh, hard work. Uh, he is same as you. Uh, he is learning uh, step by step, but initiation is the best thing. So I thank Varun once again. Uh, moving on, uh, upon I would like to start the session, uh, continue the session with a statement like, uh, it, it doesn't mean supervised or unsupervised or reinforcement learning is uh, or, or what all these and what, what is the link with the data. So I would like to explain the link that is, uh, that is going to happen is like, a data, let's assume a data. It is separated into two parts like training data and test data. So training data means the, the model is developed based upon the training data. That is where everything is same, but we are just splitting the data into two parts like training data and test data. Training data is used to train the model so that we are giving the inputs as well as outputs. Okay, by taking this input, we are we are trying to achieve that output. So the data is already being used by the model. So again, to test the model, how how well the model has been trained, we are using the test data. In test data, we are having inputs as well as outputs. But, uh, but we will not give outputs to the model. We just give the inputs. We ask the machine like, okay, you have already trained the previous data. So, okay, take this sample test data inputs and give me some output. Uh, uh, as upon the model has been trying, uh, it will take the input and predict some output. So here we will test like what is the output the machine is giving and what is the actual output. We will compare both the uh, test results and we can say, okay, uh, uh, let us assume some accuracy like 98% accuracy has been achieved. Okay, so the model is 98% efficient right now so that uh, Okay, we can build further. Some small tune-up is required so that the remaining 2% can also be covered. That yeah, we can take this as an experience. Okay, next time you, you give another data set, uh, you train the model again, and also you give the input test data, it will show some output and compare again. So there may be some improvement next time the accuracy of the model may become 100 percent so we can say like okay the model has been perfectly all right and will work for sure that's that's how uh, machine in machine learning we use data uh, it doesn't mean like uh, we are simply giving uh, input and output whatever the data we give the machine will give the correct output no the things doesn't work like that here. We need to test the model also so that we, we, we must clearly specify that the model has been trained up to 100%. So 
so that the model is very 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 efficient uh it's it's okay like uh based upon some factors the model may not train in the first instinct to the 100% based upon the data that is given uh the, those fluctuations may happen due to the unstructured data so the data uh must be in a structured that is organized form so that the machine can learn easily uh so moving on i would like to start my presentation on data processing so can you uh, see my screen yes screen yes yes salman thank you so data processing data pre processing is nothing like we, we need to make the data in an organized form so that the data can be understood in a proper way by a machine so that it can efficiently generate an output which is valid so uh why why this data pre processing means it must remove the errors and it must arrange and address each and every observation or record in the data very efficiently so while creating a machine learning model we must see like we have a right data with in a right structure so for that uh uh we uh, we know that the data may consist of some noises or some missing values or different different di dimensions of data uh, or irrelevant data may present so all these need to be removed and the data the data must be uniform and organized so that we can perform a better uh, we can build a machine learning model up to the uh, up to the extinct like the the machine learning model has no error it must be errorless so for data pre processing there are seven steps that are required so the first one is like we, we need to get the data set so what is the data you are going to take like it can be like for our training purpose we are we are just taking the inbuilt data sets that are being available but in practical we will collect the data uh, from outside environment so we can import from some excel file or csv file or many any other any any other files or even from the web directly we can retrieve so uh, the data you you must choose the data set so later you you need to import some libraries so like machine learning is being done with a uh, uh, using python basically with python but it doesn't mean it is restricted to python it can be even done through r or c++ or some any other additional things also so uh, we are just restriction ourselves to a platform like python so in python we use some libraries so that with the libraries we can adopt the easiest functions that are predefined so that we can easily uh, cope up like we can easily sum up subtract divide or we can do anything that are predefined so there is no there is no need to rewrite the code again write all the inbuilt functions so we we can need to import these libraries libraries are nothing but a set of a group of functions or group of uh, commands in a package so uh, coming to the third importing data sets here data sets mean uh, or it, uh, in any language there there's, there will be some predefined data sets uh, which can be taken as samples so that uh, users may just test their algorithm or model or uh, for educational purpose that students can be trained on the existing data for their clarification purpose uh, these may or may not be uh, 
like uh, proven with evidence they are just a sample data so uh, you need to choose your data set it doesn't mean you need to choose an only an inbuilt data set you can also choose your own for just for our explanation i am saying that to import the data so data uh, up to then you you are eligible to choose a data set and load the libraries so coming to the fourth step you need to identify the missing values so uh, the data with the missing values is not at all efficient because some of the values which are which may be crucial uh, in their own way are missing from their uh, original place the missing values can be of different types it may be within a uh, purpose or unintentionally the data may, may be replaced or misused or removed so anything may happen so we need to uh, either remove the data uh, uh, that record or observation or else we need to replace the missing value column or cell with an number or, or with a required represented data in that cell so usually we use this missing data we we need we need to rectify this missing data using the median median analysis where me, mean imputation is a mean or median imputation can be done where for missing value data mean imputation is the best option we choose so it's like uh, okay we can remove the columns or rows which are ha having the miss uh, missing values and what are, what are other data that is available to us is is uh, is to be calculated in a whole mean the mean is calculated for the whole remaining data and that mean value is is being replaced uh, is being placed in each and every cell which is having no data so the missing values can be can be of empty cell or represented with na or nan so all those can be or even zeros some maybe zero is having a value but some in some places zero can also be represented as a missing values so coming to the fifth, fifth step encoding the categorical data like the machine as were well as previously said that machine cannot understand the categorical data as of uh, as it is so we need to convert the categorical data into the continuous data or the quantity quantify it so that the machine can is capable of understanding uh, what the user is trying to say uh, so any categorical data is present is to be converted to quantitative data for our uh, for machine convenience as well as our convenience too we can read but machine must be able to understand if machine is able to understand it can outperform with an utmost efficient in an utmost efficient manner so coming to the sixth step we are going to split data set into train and test data as we have uh, discussed earlier like each and every data uh, here we use in machine learning uh, training we divide the data into test data and uh, train data where the model is trained over the train data and the test data is used to test the model just for the verification purpose how well the model is being trained and what else is to be done so uh, coming to the seventh step that is future scaling future means nothing but the independent variables and the output variables can can be called uh, called as uh, target variables so remember this two names which we which we will be using in further classes like features means independent variables target means dependent variables features are nothing but uh, which will be uh, there will be no uh, interrelation between those variables and but the target variables that is output variables are dependable on these feature variables that is input uh, that is independent variables so here in feature scaling we are dividing the data like 
uh, even if you if you split the data into train data as well as test data even in those train data you will separate the dependent variables and independent variables like all the futures can be taken into one variable all the target variables can be taken into another variable so that we can say that these are the input variables these are the output variables yesterday in yesterday's training in previous training class we have discussed that we are giving both input data and output data so that the machine can build its own program for its functionality so here we need to specify what is the input what is the output so that the machine can understand what's going on so for that purpose we, we need to future scale that is we need to separate the independent variables we need to separate the dependent variable that's how the data pre-processing is done and i will practically show you how how we can achieve this up to future scaling i will today i will discuss up to future scaling so moving on to next we can see like uh, we use the platform of python here where python is created by guido guido van rasum in 1991 so that he used the uh, he, he built this software to reduce the lengthy lengthy commands or code so that a simplified you uh, command can be built for the user interface purpose many people may not build uh, heavy cores uh, heavy codes like uh, maybe in c or c++ there may be 20 lines of code which can be segregated into just a command if a, a function uh, so for that purpose uh, our, our our founder guido when rusem has found that why can't we de uh, develop a software where the people uh, will be fond of using with a just a function so upon the purpose he built python which we are being which have been the current high level programming language which is being uh, mostly used all across the globe in future you can see that it can replace many other softwares uh, because of its ease of use it's very easy to use and no need to be be worried how we can learn python we may not know so at the end of the course you can finally have some knowledge over the python how we can make the things set right so no need to worry we are going to go slow and with an excellent presentation so uh, you can go to python.org website and you can go to the download section so based upon your os you can you can download so most of yours will be some windows users so you can go and download python latest version that is 3 uh, because the python 3 has uh, more functionality user interface than compared to python 2.7 uh, there may be a little bit change while you are using the interface but uh, a change in command but those commands doesn't affect us because we are not going to use this python directly as the uh, as, as many of the users used to download this and use from the command prompt or some console. So we are, we are going to hire like uh, use a third party like Anaconda Navigator, which is a software with, uh, through which we can access Python. So uh, in Anaconda Navigator, there can be of many many uh, divisions over the uh, many divisions like it can be used to script many other languages out, out of them uh, Jupyter notebook is a platform which is used to write and run the python code for us so you can go to google and search for anaconda navigator and you can go to the website
okay then uh, you can go to anconda individual edition and then you can download anconda by clicking here download anconda so coming to the bottom you can see like for windows you os and mac os and linux there will be different files based upon your os type and bit so you can download it so uh, you can note the url like anaconda.com slash product slash individual so which can be used to download the software and get it installed there will be many videos on youtube that will help you to install as i have uh, installed earlier uh, i will run the software for you once again so you will have an idea so this is the anaconda navigator which i am using so let's open it here it is so this is the anaconda navigator main dashboard window so uh, there will be many software uh, parts like uh, jupyter lab notebook qt console spider r studio is even here so out of all of them uh, we are going to use this jupyter notebook so jupyter notebook is a platform interactive platform environment like ide so which can help us to code python and run python commands for our analysis purpose so it's pre installed as you install the navigate uh, anaconda navigator the jupyter no notebook is installed so you can launch this so here it is this will redirect to our hard disk uh, location so that you can uh, choose where to create the python files for uh, for running the code so for for our purpose i'm going to on on desktop i can create like new new option is there here so in new i am going to create a folder so in this untitled folder we can create a python file using going to new again and going to python 3 here is the window which which states that we are we, we have opened a file okay this is this will be the python file so generally it is created with with an extension called i.py and b that is i python notebook so you can rename it as like training just it, it's an heading so this window will be of file edit where you can save the files or you can open the previous files and edit function used to cut copy paste the cells delete the cells and split the cells you can uh you can go to view toolbar upon your graphic interface you can change this where insert c is used to while we are writing a command you can insert a cell above or you can insert a cell below so cells cell is a, fun, a cell in cell you can see like run cells is like to run all the cells to run the current cell or you can run the cell now and insert above or below or likewise based upon our need you can see so kernel means kernel is like an engine uh, which we upon which this jupyter notebook is being operated whenever you can see like when you are trying to run a cell and nothing is being changed like i respect of error will leave it uh when you are written a code and it's not being executed uh, or being properly giving the output so that uh, it, it is like your kernel has been interrupted 
so you can uh, restart it or you can shut down and reconnect restart again so kernel is like our engine mm. widgets means like some gadget type which can be used upon our purpose that's it so uh, this is the cell in which we, we will be writing the code and also you can you need to remember two important points like when it is showing in of brackets it is in the code mode so you can see here it is in the code mode whereas in code mode the whatever you write it will execute as a code so when you are changing this to the markdown mode whatever you write like hi how are you this will be of text so you return it and if you enter run it will be saved as a text so uh, every time when you create a cell it will be created in a code mode only so you can you can leave it in the code mode if you are going to write a code or you can change it to the markdown mode if you are going to write some text only but not a code it is up to your your functionality your usage so this is how jupyter notebook work so there will be some set of shortcut commands which we will be using out of them we will uh, i can say some mainly like to run the cell we can use a uh, control plus enter that is on your systems like windows it will be control enter uh so and also you can the basic function key is here escape maybe in any of the softwares you have not used escape but here we are going to use escape here so uh, escape plus a is inserting a cell above and escape plus b is like as uh, uh, like uh, entering a cell creating a new cell below so above and below that is escape a and inserting a cell below escape plus b if you are going to delete the cell if you want to delete the scale a uh, cell it means escape plus dd you need to press d two times so that the cell will be deleted and for if you are going to run current cell it's control plus enter as i said earlier if you are going to run the current cell and also create a cell below you can you need to mark it like uh, shift enter so that it will execute the current cell and then jump to the next cell it will create an additional cell below and then the you can write code in the next cell so these will be the basics upon this you can learn many other in our training session so let's come quickly start with the libraries so what are the libraries so let's mark down more remember one hash will be of big size heading like heading two hashes will be of small size so this will be the font size based upon your requirement so you can also edit the previous cell by double clicking it so again you can press like control error so to run the cell in in this jupyter notebook we have uh, a flexibility to edit the cell uh which we have written earlier so uh in in many of the softwares you have previously used there may not be this functionality to edit the cell uh if you have written any code or in mistake or any co uh, any error has occurred the error will be uh, present there and then you will be continuing with, with the new command line again running 
so it will be like a messy thing where every time you create the uh, the user interface will may not be properly visual visible and for our in uh, user interface purpose this jupyter notebook is very useful so that if any mistake happen you can re edit the code and re run the cell again so there will be like libraries libraries like uh, numpy which is called as numerical python which is it consists of many basic functions we uh, to perform some mathematical operations uh, every basic function can be present in this numpy so the first and foremost package which we use is numpy so second one can be pandas which is panel data structures which we which it's it's continue uh, which contains different set of functions which gives the python the capability of analyzing uh, and building the models previously in python there there i there is a capability of only analyzing but with the with the pandas library the python can be used to model recreate manipulate process and also visualize so pandas library is like a necessary a need to the python it uh, then furtherly you can we can discuss like seaborn package uh, where we will be using to import many data sets from seaborn itself and there will be another package like skykitlearn sk learn which means skykitlearn which is useful for cell uh, for selection like uh, model selection like training and testing data so and also it can be used to uh, get the data sets inbuilt data sets so apart from that we can use matplotlib uh, uh, matplot matplotlib dot uh, it is it is used to visualize the graphs or any data uh, using the python plot so matplotlib is usually for data visualization purpose and there can be of many other libraries too but up to our extinct for our discussion as of now these libraries are enough for us so let's get quickly started with this importing these library so moving on let's see import like to import a library the command is import so we write import numpy sorry to say that uh, previously i didn't mention that these libraries are pre uh, pre installed in the jupyter notebook where the jupyter notebook comes with 4000 inbuilt libraries all these libraries are are uh, are built in this jupyter notebook itself predefined if we if you want to install some new library which is not here you can use like command like pip install pip install and like uh, library name there is no need to write like uh, uh, brack braces here so pip space install space the library which you want you can just write that command and just click enter whatever library you are willing to use the library will be installed and stored so that you can use again and again uh, so as of now these libraries are previously installed we are just going to import them uh, so for uh, let's import numpy so import numpy as np so whenever i am going to use numpy uh, numpy we can we can use just a two letter word like np we can call as np 
if you call np it it represents the numpy so in python we basically give a tag line like a symbol to every data structure for easily use for our purpose every time we no need to write numpy matplotlib so there is no need of writing big big things so easily we can define it as shortcuts and you can build the model upon uh, again by pressing enter so we can import pandas let's say as pd and we can import seaborn as sns these are just a generally used taglines which can, which will be easy to understand for you when you are uh, referring any other websites or videos so that i am using the same tags mm, as of now this is these come these libraries are enough for us so every time you run any any model you are going to build a model we will generally use these so you can note down this as mandatory uh, where i press shift enter to run the present cell and go to the next cell here you can see like in input you input braces you you, you can see one one means this is the first cell first time you are running a code cell if you are going to make something like hi it is the second cell and it will retrieve the error saying hi is not defined of course hi is nothing in python so let's again run this cell as hello again click shift plus enter it will record it as three it means the input cell is third cell that you are running now which means they yeah, you, you can already see one and you are now able to see three that means you have ran a cell second cell which is resulted in an error or which is recorded and now it is being represented as three so it, this can say that the cell is previously edited so we can use this cell or it, you can even delete the cell escape dd even if you write this write a new cell now it will name it as four see now the cell is coded as four because we have already created two other cells and deleted them so the current cell we are running is fourth cell it's just for our purpose for identification like previously the cell uh, is being reused okay now going on to the next thing we need to import some libraries so, sorry data sets so previously of your use you may or may not aware of some uh, data set, inbuilt data sets like iris package tips package empty cars or also the packages which we use in r r studio or r can be imported to python here so out of them i will be importing iris data set for today's purpose for just for your understanding you know what is iris and i will also explain again what is iris data set so let's say we we, we create a variable like iris we need to store the data which we are being imported into iris so i named the file as iris iris here is a variable which is uh, which will store the data which is present in iris data set so iris equal to uh, let's say we we know that packages or uh, data sets are present in seaborn package and the tagline for seaborn we have uh, represented as sns so sns is the, will be the tagline for us so we will be using sns dot in sns in seaborn if you want to import any data set 
you need to use the command like load underscore data set of break in braces you need to enter the data set it can be of single quotes or double quotes no no more no problem whatever the quotes it doesn't matter so it, it need to be represented in code as it is a uh, string every string need to be represented in quotes for sure so uh, let's say iris and enter shift enter so you can see like the command has been successfully run so that the iris data set is stored in the variable name iris if you replace this iris as data it can be stored in data also for our convenience to not get confused i am storing it in iris so let's visualize it iris shift enter you can see like it it has from 0 to 149 rows with five columns which means 150 rows with five columns data is being generated here so each value each data is having its own data each column and each row is ha is being represented in a well organized and structured manner here here iris is a data set which we will be talking about the a trees uh, where uh, a leaf is being measured based upon the sepal width sepal length sepal width petal length petal width so that their species are identified as setosa virginica and pet and other one is something else there will be three species uh, are determined in this iris data set so it will be classified into three data uh, three species based upon the data that is available as i was previously talking earlier like we use a data set on which the model will be built uh, by splitting the data into train data and test data so using the sep uh, uh, let's say these four variables sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width so these four are the input variables these input variables will will be used by the by the model so that an output like what species the flower is if these measurements are given this flower will fall under some setosa species if these if another data is given maybe this fall under virginica so this this modeling is being done in the machine learning so it will develop a program for that purpose Kalyan, unmute your voice. Sorry. Uh, so, if you want to see the shape uh, of the iris data set, uh, we, you can use the command like iris.shape, which retrieves like it has 150 rows and 5 columns, where the indexing starts from 0, so it will end up with 149. So, which means there will be 150 rows and you can see the five columns so this uh, 
uh, iris data set can be furtherly analyzed like visualized like what is the variable is being uh, uh, what's the variable is telling about so we can use like iris.info so this will tell the info of the data set like it is the panda score data frame so the iris variable which we are using now is a data frame created uh, which has 150 entries from 0 to 149 so uh, it has column 0 even the column indexing is starts from 0 so uh, the first column is sepal length with 150 data sets and the structure of the data the data type is float float means which is having some decimal points integer is doesn't have any decimal points whereas float is a data type which have decimal points and sepal with petal and petal with each of them are same i mean in in info they are same coming to the species which we can see there will be three species in the data that is uh, that we have seen earlier uh, it's being as it is a uh, alphabetical in uh, uh, in manner it will store it as object everything in python will be stored as an object so python is represented as an object orient programming software so that is called oops ops so that's uh, that's the info about the iris data set so let's move on to the next thing as we have discussed in our problem like we have completed the data set importing libraries importing the data sets so the next thing is like finding the missing values So the missing values, let's check the data is whether having any missing values or not. Usually the representation of the uh, of the uh, missing values can be NA or N uh, or null N U L L. Anything can be used here. For my convenience, I am using NA that is not available or something which you can name it as. So NA is represented as a null value here. So let us take our data set iris dot is NA is the command which we use. So is 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 NA we are identifying whether the data is having any null values or not. So for that purpose we are entering is NA or not. So is NA off. You can have a doubt like why we did, did not uh, place a braces to the shape whereas we have placed, placed the parentheses to the info. So there will be different set of functions like some of them will, are not required to place a parentheses. Some are the functions which are need to be uh, executed to place a parentheses here. So there will be a difference in the functions if the info is not being the parentheses it will it may have any other representation like this but yeah. kalyan uh, yes sir there is a platform called uh, pycharm i guess you already know about it in which it is uh, showing suggestions like r in in r we will get suggestions right yes yes the syntax suggestions it is showing suggestions for python uh, the platform's name is PyCharm if somebody wants to download it. Yes, Varun, but our purpose is it's an IDE which we generally use. Most of them prefer Jupyter Notebook. Yeah. So for ease of use, there is no need of installing Python or not importing individually the libraries as every library is previously installed. Okay. So, for our interaction purpose. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Kalyan. So, so moving on to the missing values. Uh, here, ease.na can retrieve the missing value saying false means it is not a missing value. If you have identified any true, you can say 
okay this place is having a missing value uh, as we cannot see whole data here you can you can even use the print command also print of same iris dot is any of this is just to print in a visible format nothing else so they can it can be printed like directly entering or even that that is entered in the print command so you cannot identify like which row or which may column may have the missing values for that purpose we are going to enter like iris dot is na again after writing the command you need to set a dot that means the further command dot sum of which shows that sepal length column has zero sepal width has zero petal length zero so no column is having any missing value so by this we can say like our data set is free of missing values our data set is free to use for any machine learning model if you have any data uh, having any data set having missing values you need to implement mean imputation so that all the missing values need to be replaced with the mean value and so that you you must look like whether to remove the entire row or column observations or uh, so or you need to replace the missing value with some value like mean value or median value so this is the missing values treatment which we generally use as of now we have having no missing values so let me proceed further so we have find the missing data if encoding the categorical data for our purpose for our, the machine can understand here the setosa or some other thing or virginica so uh if you want to represent the same as if setosa has one and other thing has two and the uh, rest of the thing has three like virginica is equal to three you you can convert the species uh, you can extract the species variable you can code it like setosa if if setosa is use you take it as one if virginica is used you take it as three so based on that purpose you can code this encoding the categorical data i am not using this cat categorical data right now because i am not going to train any data set here just i am showing you how to extract the data set and how to use the data set so coming coming to the splitting data set into train and test data let let us say the iris set is having some Mm, 150 rows out of which the basic rule is like at least the model must have must take like seven must be trained on 30% data set and uh, sorry 70% of data set and 30% is used to test the data set also you can use like you can train on 80% data 85 90 whatever thing you like but you we will just test the data like take this much some percentage as train data so, and leave the rest to the test so based upon your purpose you can take on your requirement but in general people used to take 70% for the test training the data and 30% for testing the data so we can say like in 0 to 150 so like 0 to 149 that is 150 rows uh, like 70% would be like 105 rows that is suppose 105 rows can be of 70% and remaining 45 rows can be used for testing the data testing the model so it will be the test data the first one of, it may be or may not be first it is the model selection what rows it will take as a train data it's uh, it's just a random picking 
we use here if you want these rows to be train data only you can take like the first 145 rows uh, can be train unless uh, remaining four will i will keep it as test that's your convenience of using the data set so uh, before going to select like train and test data we need to separate the data set into feature variables and target variables so i'm going to split the data here into two like all the feature variables that are independent variables are comes into one variable all the dependent variables or target variables will be stored in another variable so let me split it like uh, let us suppose an x x will be an independent variable a representation of all indep independent variables so we take iris data set dot we, we can we need like sepal length sepal width petal length petal width so we need these four leaving species behind so we need this in python we can select using uh, like iris dot loc that is location function which can be used to represent like i need all rows so a code uh, in east to mark is represented uh, in colon mark will represent i want all the rows if you want to enter let us say this is the basic structure of loc so loc will retrieve the location where the first column represent like what is what are the rows you want to select if you leave it as empty it will select all the rows that is from 0 to 149 each and every row will be selected if i select it as 1 to 10 it will take the rows from 1 uh, 1 to 10 so remember that the indexing is is done from 0 and these are exclusive they will leave the last thing so uh, location will is inclusive that is one and it, it will take from one to ten that is it will retrieve ten ten rows of data but in ilvoc if you use ilvoc that is addressing the value it is also a, a method to extract the data in which you uh, you can also retrieve the data but it will be exclusive here the 10 will be exclusive if you write it as 10 it will take up to 9 only leaving the 10 behind that is the rule which we uh, which which is, which makes a difference from lvoc to ilvoc uh, in ilvoc the rows can be of numbers numeric because the indexing happens with numbers so the rows can be of numbers but coming to the columns you can you can take it like uh, the uh, what columns you would require like sepal underscore length sepal underscore width so like that whatever columns you like you would like to add all the columns even if you write play uh, colon and give so this this is like you are selecting columns from sepal length to petal width that is you are going to select all the four columns here these four columns will be selected and the data will be retrieved here so i need all the data so i am just leaving uh, all the rows of data so i am just leaving a colon so colon means it will select all the rows if you are going to select sepal length is to petal width it is going to select the first four vari first four columns which are the independent variables that are our future variables so let us run this so it is successfully created in x variable and you you can check the shape as uh, shape of the variable like x dot shape 
it has retrieved 150 rows with four columns only so the species where the column has been left off also you can write this as another thing like you can also like uh, x equal to iris dot drop of species that is in iris data frame you are just dropping out species column and you need to specify like axis equal to one general in general this will be like the columns uh, names which I have written here this will be the axis one whereas the rows will be of axis zero so these are axis zeros and this will be of axis one if you are specifying axis equal to one it will remove from the columns so this will retrieve the same as this if you want you can check here like running the command and same x dot shape same everything is same just a command for our convenience the same can be here retrieved using iloc also where in iloc if you use iloc you can see like here so i'm selecting all the rows but instead of representing with objects or in characters even the columns are, are to be represented in numbers so i will represent like 0 is to some 4 this one this one so i have ran the command i log from all the rows and 0 to 4 means 0 1 2 3 only the four number will be of exclusive it will leave the four so 0 1 2 3 only it will come so there will be a four rows that will be extracted which we have seen here 150 rows and four columns so based upon our requirement on our ease of use you can run the commands in many ways so i, I will be using like this and moving further uh, let's extract like y equal to iris dot species it's just simple just selecting a one column you can extract like in iris you need species so let us check y y dot shape 150 rows simple as it so 150 rows as it is only one column that the number is not represented so 150 rows are being extracted so we have extracted the future variables into x and the target variables into y so the future scaling is done now the process is to split the data into training and testing of data so let us split the model for splitting the model into train and test we require the data the library called a scalar so let us import the a scalar package as it as jupyter notebook has already inbuilt with uh, a scalar so i am just retrieving it back so for that i am using from a scalar we are going to import model underscore uh, sorry from sklearn dot model underscore selection we gonna import trying underscore test underscore split this is the function that is predefined in the sklearn in the sklearn package model selection is an variable also a, a part in that the train underscore test underscore split is a function that is predefined which will split the data into train data sets and test data sets so for ease of our use we are importing this model you can identify these commands through through across the web there will be many sites that will be listing what are the commands available in such a package or such a library so train test split is 
available in model underscore selection package of sklearn so let's let's run it okay it successfully run so the main thing is like we need to divide the future variables into train and test data set we need to divide the target variable that is our output variable y into train and test data set so every data set is make a, uh, made into four parts equally whatever the train data set you are having the uh, of the future variables the same amount of train uh, test uh, train target variable is to be maintained let us show let, let me show by running like x is divided into x train comma x underscore test so previously we are having 150 rows now the 150 rows will be divided into two two parts okay then let us split the y also so y underscore train comma y underscore test so we are going to create the four variables here remember x will be split into further two more and y will be split into further two more so there will be out of four variables will be created using the train underscore test underscore split function so the four variables equal to train underscore test underscore split of split of we are using the x variable to split into two so and y variable to split into two so here x is a feature variable y will be your target variable so x comma y we here we are going to specify the train size as i mentioned earlier in general we are we are going to take 70 percent of data into the train data set and 30 into the test so for train size i am going to specify like 0 0.7 so 0 0.7 means 70 percent here out of one 0 0.7 is like 70 percent so train size will be of 0 0.7 if you want to specify the test you can also specify the test the leftover will be the other if i am going to specify that test size equal to 0 0.3 this is also same as train size equal to 0 0.7 you can represent both or you can leave off with one as of now anything can be used for your convenience let me take train I am training over 70 percent of data so training equal to 0 0.7 which is same as test underscore size equal to 0 0.3 so comma just a little command like random underscore state equal to any number let, let me say one it, it is like uniform like division let us suppose Warren, Raven, or some other person like Salman, Mehboob, Subhani. So, all of you are performing on the same data set, let us suppose. So, you, uh, everyone must get the same output. For that purpose, we are uh, everyone will select like random underscore state equal to one so that the data. Uh, like the algorithm like train underscore test underscore split will take these specific rows so that everyone will be having same data with them all of their outputs must be one and same because every one of them are having are taking the same data with same random state if uh, let us say one is taking one gokul is taking two revant is taking three none of them may or may not coincide but usually none of them will have same splitting of data the data splitting will vary it's like random sampling just suppose i am picking this data it is not so sure like if if let us say my random state is changed to two from one so now it may not i may not pick the same data which i have picked earlier so the data is segregated or classified distributed in different manner 
So I can take any number of data. Let me take 42. Nothing will happen. Let me take 100. I will take some other way a number. So usually it must be a number. Let me take one. If I am taking one, if you are also taking some one, we both are doing on same data. We must get a same results. Either you have made a mistake or I have made a mistake, but the results must be same. If if they are not same, you are you have made a mistake or I have made a mistake. It means that. So this this will be the command and just run it. Shift enter. So finally the data has been split into four variables. Let me check. X underscore train dot shape. Previously X shape is 150 comma 4. That is 150 rows and four columns. Now the data is split into 105 rows and four columns. Where are the remaining 45? So uh, out of 150 rows, there are only 105 rows in X train. Let me check with X test. 45. So the data has split into 70% that is 105 and remaining 30% that is 45. Similarly, y underscore train dot shape, y underscore test dot shape, same, one and all. This is how every data set will be split into train data and test data. This will be common for every algorithm in supervised learning mostly. Let's keep unsupervised learning a, a while aside. Remember this process and you can you can learn like every algorithm will have this up to this part every algorithm will have in common. Every algorithm will have importing libraries, libraries choosing the data set, splitting into test, I mean future variables and target variables even analyzing the missing values also. So selecting the feature variables, target variables, so importing the model, splitting into train and test, up to here every every algorithm will be of same. So keep practicing this and get trained here. I'm done with my part. So the floor is open to any questions. If you have any queries, you can ask me now. Kalyan, actually this is not question. Like uh, as an R learner, uh, we get to know many functions, right? Most yeah. of the functions in Python are also similar. Uh, noob like me, uh, naive like me is getting confused to remember all these. Is there any particular way so that we can better remember this? Because in uh, interviews, they're expecting us to remember both simultaneously, R as well as Python. So any suggestions from your side? There is no, no such suggestions like that, Varun. So I am just, I would like to recommend to practice as much as you can on Python so that you will be habituated here. There maybe you can use a type of some command. Here you can you are using like some variable dot shape shape or info or describe even iris dot describe can be of a command. This will describe the count mean standard deviations all the statistics. So there will be of different commands here and there. There is nothing else we can do. Just remember practice practice practice. I'm done with my question or doubts. So anyone having any other queries? So you can save the file as file and go to save as or save and checkpoint, whatever you like. So it will be saved and you can see the file as desktop, here I created the untitled folder. Here is the 
file I have created. So when whenever I use, I can come up to here. Like I can create any way. Previously I have created like say this introduction to Jupyter Notebook Python. So this is the individual Python notebook file I have created earlier, two hours ago. If you want to redirect to any other location, you can create there. If I want, I can create another file here. Go to new, go to Python, create here, use. Anything can be done through Jupyter Notebook. So practice as much more as you can. So save the file, like go to file, save and checkpoint. You can like go to logout. You can close it. So this file can be used by your friends too. I can share the file to suppose Varun. So Varun can access this file from the Jupyter notebook. So like if he have placed a placing my file in untitled let's name this folder something so let's go to desktop and i i can rename this folder so I can go to this if he have places my file here he can open just by simply clicking here he can view all the commands all the outputs I am getting so it's of ease of use so I am done with my presentation so if you have having any doubts you can you are free to ask me or else response uh, uh, if you have clear let us close the session yeah kalyan i mahesh yes mahesh yeah there is a software called spss what is difference between spss and python in using spss is statistical uh, uh, package for social sciences where you analyze uh, large amounts of data it's like analyzing the st a statistical analysis it's purely related to statistical analysis okay okay way n number of observations like big data analysis can be imported big data can be imported to spss uh, and which will be analyzed it will perform like chi square test uh, anova and many statistic uh, statistic p statistic z statistic tests and also some graphs to visualize with it is restricted to perform statistical analysis where in Jupyter notebook you, that is Jupyter, Jupyter notebook is just a platform the utmost thing we learn is python here so python is used to create a model develop a model modify a model or even data anal analysis from python we can train a machine like in, we build an algorithm we can define a function mm. if you are if you are if you know a code you can build your own function you can build your own algorithm in spss everything is predefined just we enter the data okay. so that's the difference between lot of difference between spss and python okay okay any further questions um, Karyan, I don't have any questions for you, but I have a question for Varun. Uh, Varun, can I ask you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you mentioned that there are uh, different types of uh, ML apart from uh, supervised and unsupervised and uh, reinforcement, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you please name the other types? I thought yeah. like. Uh, there exists only three types of machine learning. No, actually there are, uh, to be more specific, there are three only, but combination of uh, these three, there are different, uh, like you can combine both supervised as well as reinforcement. Theory, the combinations yeah. has uh, derived some other, yeah, yeah, Kalyan. So, commonly, 
you are as up to up to now we can say like uh, supervised unsupervised or else reinforced learning just just uh, upon a school of thought according to a school of thought there may be three of now according to anders per- perspective there can be of six like supervised uh, uh, semi supervised un- uh, learning semi unsupervised learning there can be of different types just a difference in school of thought exactly like uh, the semi supervised some other like supervised learning called as hybrid supervised learning so like i will be sharing that link you can go through so that you will get more okay. idea of some other thank you yeah hey guys like i i noticed that uh, many of them were active but i really uh, i really feel it uh, better if you answer my question of spider man there are four villains which i have mentioned one villain among spider man uses the concept of neural link and machine learning at that time it was so like fiction but now it's a reality like try uh, kindly give it a check definitely you'll find it amazing yeah it is an octopus right yeah doctor octopus it is he he, he uses such a machine learning <coughs> in fact that is pure artificial intelligence because the hands will control on themselves the hands will have their own feelings other uh, than what a doctor will have thank you mahesh <laughs> Uh, Kalyan, I have a question. Ha, Komali. Ha, Aparna. Tell me, tell me. As uh, uh, Kalyan, tell, can you tell me the difference between list and tuples in Python? Okay. Ah, uh, list can be which can be mutable. Ah, uh, or like like it is a having a series like ah uh, a series of data. you can store different set of uh, types of variables like a number or an string or an another thing a float can be stored or a logic can be stored in series so uh, in tuple uh, uh, the list will be of uh, the list can be changed whereas the tuple cannot be changed It it is not reusable or editable, so that will be the uh, that will be the only difference between list and tuple. A list can be used in a tuple, but uh, list can be edited, but the tuple cannot be edited. This will be uh, there will be other sets like uh, other types also like sets and dictionaries. We will be explaining this with uh, in further classes more specifically. So no need to worry, my friend. We are here. Thank you, Kalyan. Thank you so much. So that's it for today. Or any other queries, you can ask now. Uh, Kalyan, can you please share the Python notebook, sorry, Jupyter notebook that you have prepared right now for this session? Yes, yeah. I will be sharing in the group. So yeah. also the link. yeah to download the jupyter notebook yeah okay done what else okay fine let's close the session thank you yeah we can wind up man